Hello and welcome back. We are in the Associations Learning Module, and this is a short, hopefully 10-minute video where we will take a look at a very interesting paper from 1982 titled Heroin Overdose Death, Contribution of Drug-Associated Environmental Cues. This is by Shep Siegel and authors. And it shows one way in which classical conditioning phenomena may be uh, a mechanism of drug tolerance. So before we jump into the paper, I want to say the contents of this paper could be on a quiz or an exam. And I also wanted to uh, talk about this paper because throughout the course, we'll see many examples where environmental context plays an important role in a cognitive process. For example, the room that you're in might remind you of things that happened in that room before. That's a situation where a context can prompt you to remember something. This paper talks about a role for environmental context in a drug tolerance physiological process. So without further ado, let's get into the paper. Here it is. You can download it off of Blackboard for this course, and it's only two pages long, so it's a quick read. There's the first page, and there's the second page. We're going to go through the paper to hit the major points. And if you decide to do the writing assignment for uh, this paper, uh, I'll try to identify, help you identify the question, the alternative hypotheses, the logic of the hypotheses, the method, the major results, and the inferences that are made ab about those results. Let's try to find some of the big questions of this research. We will go to the beginning of the paper, and let me read a few sentences here. First of all, substantial tolerance generally develops to the effects of opiates. The drug experienced individual can survive a dose many times greater than that which would kill the dr drug inexperienced in individual. And in 1982, despite such tolerance, about 1% of U.S. heroin addicts die each year, mostly from the so-called overdose. I'm going to scroll down a bit and read this sentence here. But many experienced drug users die after a dose that should not be fatal in view of their tolerance. So here we have a kind of public health puzzle. Experienced drug users who have taken heroin many times have become tolerant to larger amounts of heroin. However, there's some suggestion that heroin users may take a smaller amount of the drug than they could normally take and might die as a result. So it is strange that uh, experienced drug users might be overdosing on amounts of the drug that they are normally tolerant to. Why is this occurring? That's one of the big questions here. And there's some more specific questions also, so let's try to find those. Okay, let's scroll up and here is a suggestion. They're going to suggest that drug overdose may frequently result from a failure of tolerance. That is the opiate addict who can usually tolerate extraordinarily high doses is not tolerant on the occasion of the overdose. If, if this is something that's happening, what could cause a failure of a tolerance process? All right, let's scroll up to the top of the first page in the third column. And right up here, I'm going to uh, read this out. What we will see here is the proposal of a major hypothesis. It's, it's an alternative hypothesis about what might be causing a failure of drug tolerance. Let me read it out. I'll try my best, although I think I've got marbles in my mouth today. So a recently proposed model of tolerance 
based on the principles of Pavlovian conditioning, suggests conditions that favor such a failure of tolerance. The model is based on Pavlov's suggestion that drug administration constitutes a conditioning trial with the conditioned stimulus consisting of environmental cues present at the time of administration and the unconditioned stimulus consisting of the systemic effects of the drug. According to this interpretation of tolerance, as the drug is administered with increasing frequency, with the same environmental cues signaling each pharmacological stimulation, an association is established between these cues and the central effects of the drug. This association may be revealed in a subject with a history of drug abuse by administering a placebo in the drug administration environment. Conditioned pharmacological responses revealed in this manner are often the converse of the unconditioned drug effects. Such anticipatory responses attenuate the drug effects and contribute to tolerance. I'm gonna to try to unpack that a little bit and let's, let's talk about caffeine as a drug example. So I drink coffee all the time in the morning and I'm pretty tolerant to it. Um, I'm gonna talk about three scenarios and I'll just put them down here on the whiteboard, uh, make some lines. So here is scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. In the first scenario, it's the very first time I've ever had a coffee in my entire life. I make the coffee, drink the coffee, and what happens is I get, you know, I get really awake. I'm like, wow, that caffeine's hitting really hard. Let's talk about the second scenario. This is what my life is like right now. I drink coffee every day, drink it for many years. So I uh, am highly tolerant to coffee. When I drink a coffee, basically nothing happens. So it's sort of like a nothing. I'm very tolerant to this drug. A third situation was described recently in that, or I just, just descri described it from the paper. So what happens if I wake up in the morning and I do my usual routine, but somebody swaps out the coffee and puts in decaf. So it's like a placebo. So I drink the coffee and you could get some kind of weird effects of that. My, everything in my body is expecting caffeine. I've got drug tolerance processes going on in my brain, preparing a kind of compensatory response to the caffeine it's expecting, but it doesn't get any caffeine. So that opposing force, which is going to neutralize the effects of caffeine, um, just takes over a little bit and I, I start feeling a little bit weird. So I get a, a kind of weird feeling going on there. So this is an idea uh, to sort of explain some of those concepts that we were just talking about. All right, let's go back to the paper and look at a prediction or uh, a, 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 a logical implication of this idea. So they're saying on the basis of this model, a failure of tolerance should occur if the drug is administered in an environment that has not in the past been associated with the drug. That's very interesting. And what we can do is imagine a kind of fourth situation here. So I'll put a four, uh, oops, here we go, four. There's a, a fourth situation with this uh, coffee cup example. All right, so let's say that I wake up in the morning and I drink my coffee and I do it in my living room and I've been doing it for years, same living room, same morning, every single day. Now, this living room is an environmental context. It is like a conditioned stimulus. Whenever I see the living room, the living room is telling my body you're gonna get some caffeine. And so that cue triggers the caffeine tolerance response. So when I drink coffee in my living room, I don't get much effects of caffeine. 
the idea that we just heard proposed uh, was that the effects of caffeine for me, who is tolerant to those effects, uh, would be different if I took my coffee in a novel environment. So if I woke up in the morning and went somewhere I've never been before, that environment would not be a cue associated with caffeine. And if I drank my coffee there, I would not have a caffeine tolerance response ready for that caffeine. And in, in that case, I might uh, experience the effects of caffeine in a much larger way than normal. And the authors are suggesting this could be going on in heroin overdose death situations. An experienced heroin user might take the drug in a location that is unfamiliar to them, that uh, is not associated with a toleration response. That could cause them to potentially overdose because uh, the drug was the, in, sorry, the environment associated cues uh, normally present were not there. Let's go back to the paper and see how they tested this idea. All right, in this paper, uh, the results of the research are actually kind of put before the methods. The methods here involved rats. And if we look at the results description, it's, it's right on the first page at the bottom. It says the results of the study described below indicate that heroin induced mortality in heroin experienced rats is higher when the drug is injected in an environment not previously associated with the drug than when it is injected in the usual drug administration environment. So this gives us a kind of idea of what might have happened in this study. Uh, sorry, I didn't have that showing on screen. Here's the, the portion that I just had read. And we have to go to the next page to get a sense of the methods. So let me quickly go over that. So we have some opiate inexperienced male rats and they were intravenously injected with heroin 15 times, one injection every other day. The way they did it was uh, to start with small doses and then move up to larger doses. Here's the schedule. The first injection was one milligram, and then the second and third was two, and then the fourth through seventh was four, and so on. So the rats start off with a little bit, and they keep getting a little bit more, uh, and they become tolerant to these doses of, of the drug. Here's, here's the really important part. The injections were given in two different environments. One was the colony where the rats were individually housed. And another one was a different room with constant white noise. So these two rooms are like different environmental contexts that were noticeably different to the animals. And there were uh, one group received the drug administration in the regular room, and the other one received drug administration in the noisy room. Okay, after the rats uh, became tolerant to uh, larger doses of the drug, the main manipulation was to either uh, give those rats the drug in the same room that they were used to getting it, or to switch them into the other room where they had never received the drug before. The prediction was that rats receiving the drug in the same room where they always got it before would be more tolerant to the drug. And rats who received the drug in a new room where they've never received it before would be less tolerant and potentially even suffer an overdose. So just to warn you, uh, some rats were sacrificed in this research. We can look at this table of results right here that's on the first page to uh, see what happened in the study. So we have table one, rat mortality after the injection of heroin at 15 milligrams. So this uh, is a large amount for the rats, 
If you have a control group of rats, and they had 28 in this study, who had never received the drug before, these rats had a 96% mortality rate. So that amount of the drug caused those rats to die. Now we have these two other groups, ST and DT. ST is the same treatment. If you had received um, the schedule of drug injections in the same room, um, what happens when you get a fairly large dose? Well, you can see here that the mortality rate is substantially lower, only 32% here. So these rats had experience with the drug, they were already tolerant to the drug, and when they received a fairly large dose, they were remained tolerant, and much fewer of them suffered uh, an overdose. The DT group were the rats who were switched into a new environment. Now remember, these rats also had uh, become tolerant to the drug. There was 42 of these rats. And if we look at their mortality, it was in the middle. So 64% of those rats uh, were killed in this study. And this shows the remarkably pronounced effects of shifting the environmental cue. The DT rats presumably were just as tolerant to this amount of the drug, but when they received the drug in a novel environment, there was a failure of that tolerance process. What inferences can we draw from these results? Let's take a look at the conclusion paragraph. So in conclusion, groups of rats with the same pharmacological history of heroin administration can differ in mortality following administration of a high dose of the drug. Rats that received the potentially lethal dose in the context of environmental cues previously associated with sublethal doses were more likely to survive than animals that received the dose in the context of cues not previously associated with the drug. I might say a broader inference here is that classical conditioning processes and classical conditioning, uh, let's call them, yeah, associative learning processes appear to be involved in drug tolerance phenomena. This suggests quite broadly that the context that we're in, like I'm in a room right now, uh, are may become associated with all sorts of things, in including um, the kinds of things you do in the room, like drinking coffee. And the room might uh, be involved in triggering physiological processes involved in that drug tolerance process, as well as, you know, memories for things that happen in this room and uh, other types of things. Sorry, my apologies, I didn't really think the ending of this one through. However, I will return to some of the points I made at the very beginning. Throughout the remaining learning modules, we're gonna see lots of examples where cues are important for cognition in many ways. So environments can be useful for helping us remember things. Cues can be useful for directing our attention to things. And I thought it would be interesting to show an example where environmental contexts actually play a role in uh, physiological aspects of humans and animals as well. All right, that's it for now, and we'll see you next time.